Hi friends, good evening. Welcome to my channel Mugambiga Nursing. Friends, in this video, we can see some previous year questions. We will see the question one by one. And the first question, size of intravenous cannula in gauge used for neonates. This is the question and this question was asked in the SSB exam 2013. And the options we can see first option, option A 18 gauge, option B 24 gauge, option C 22 gauge and option D 20 gauge. This is the question and options here. Normally which size cannula is used for neonate that is our question. So usually we are using 24 size cannula for neonate. That is the 24 size cannula is usually yellow color. This is the small size cannula. Why we are using this gauge cannula to neonates? Their vein is very small and can't easily accessible. So we are using this 24 size cannula to the neonate. And also children and very elderly people also we can prefer this yellow, yellow color cannula. That is 24 gauge cannula. Okay, so option B is correct, 24 gauge is correct over here and the remaining option we can see 18 gauge. 18 gauge is usually green color and this is mainly used for uh, in case of blood transfusion and in case of trauma and all fast IV transfusion and all we are using 18 gauge cannula. And second or third option, option C, 22 gauge. 22 gauge is usually blue color and this is mainly used for both children and older adult we are using for all adult mainly we are using 22 gauge cannula for IV transfusion and all we are using 22 gauge cannula and the next one is 20 size cannula is there it is uh, pink size pink color okay this is mainly used for um, blood transfusion and uh, normal IV transfusion and all we are using pink color cannula and the flow rate for this pink color cannula is 60 ml per minute okay so here for neonate we are using 24 gauge cannula and this yellow color the flow rate in this 24 gauge cannula is 20 ml per minute okay the next question second question inflammation of the tongue is known as this is the question this question also asked in dssb exam 2013 so our option we can see first option gingivitis option b glossitis option c pyrotitis option d stomatitis so question is inflammation of the tongue inflammation of the tongue is known as glossitis option b is correct and the remaining option gingivitis option a gingivitis means inflammation of the gums is known as gingivitis and option c parotitis means inflammation of the parotid gland is known as parotitis and option d is stomatitis stomatitis means inflammation of mucous membrane of the mouth is known as stomatitis so inflammation of mucous membrane of the mouth is called as stomatitis here our question is inflammation of the tongue so inflammation of the tongue is known as glossitis option b is correct over here and next the third question is which of the following medication order is immediately and once only administration this is the question and options are option a pm order option b stat order option b single orders option d standing orders so our question is medication which is given immediately and once only administration okay that is the question and here options also we saw here option that is immediate and at once order is called the stat order okay stat order means immediate and at once order is stat order here option b is correct and pm order means afternoon medication which is given afternoon is known as pm order and single dose means it is given only one dose and standing order means option d standing order means 
these are some written protocols that the authorized health team members can carry out the written orders without waiting the physician order again that is called a standing order for example immunization if the baby mother is coming with immunization card means we can give the immunization according to the age wise and also for urine in some test and all urine test blood routine blood sugar test and all we can do that all standing order by standing order we can do and also pregnancy test urine pregnancy test and in sub in case of uh, this hypertensive patient we can check the bp and all this all some standing orders we can carry out without without prescription immediate medical prescription okay they are called the standing orders here our question is immediately and once only administration is tattooed. The next question, fourth question, most important aspect of aseptic technique is used. And the options are option A, hand washing, option B, gown technique, option C, mask, option D, gloves. So our question is most important aspect of aseptic, which is the most important aspect of a septic technique that is the question so we can see like among this option hand washing is correct why hand washing hand washing is the most important aspect to prevent cross infection to the patient so in order to prevent infection to the patient for each and every procedure before doing procedure we have to do hand washing so hand washing is the first thing the remaining thing gowning technique mask gloves and are all important according to the procedure it is important but normally each and every procedure before doing we are doing hand washing so first aspect is important aspect is hand washing option a is correct The next question, fifth question, a congenital malformation in which the urethra opens in the upper surface of the penis is. This is the question and options are option A, hypospadiasis, option B, epispadiasis, option C, phimosis, option D, ectopia vesica. This is the question and options also we saw this question asked in Kerala PSC exam. So the question is the urethra opens in the upper surface of the penis okay that is the question so answer is option b epispadiasis epi means epi means we have to ting epi means above above means upper upper the urethra opens in the upper surface is called the epispadiasis and the hypospadiasis means lower surface of the penis that is called the hypospadiasis and the phimosis means Inability to retract the foreskin of the penis is called the phimosis. That is painful retraction of the foreskin. And the ectopia vesica. Ectopia vesica means this is also a congenital malformation. Congenital anomaly in which bladder is protruding outside. That is extropy of the bladder. That is called the ectopia vesica. Here our question is urethra opens in the upper surface. So upper surface is called the epi. Epispadiasis. Option B is correct. Mm. Question, sixth question the immunoglobulin responsible for primary immune responses this is the question and the options are option a igm option b igg option c ig option d iga here question is which immunoglobulin is responsible for primary immune response the first immune response is option we will see option A is correct that is IgM is correct over here that is the immunoglobulin earliest immunoglobulin to be synthesized by the fetus is IgM that is responsible for primary immune response so uh, option A IgM is correct and the remaining option IgG IgG is the most common immunoglobulin about 70% of total immunoglobulin is IgG okay it, the immunoglobulin which can cross the placenta is also IgG okay and also this is related to secondary immune response the primary immune response is mainly IgM and the secondary immune response is by IgG and the next option we can see option C IgE IgE is mainly playing an important role in hyper 
sensitive reaction that is anaphylaxis allergy and also parasitic infections and all the immunoglobulin response is IgE the immunoglobulin which is responsible for allergies parasitic infections and anaphylactic reactions that all IgE and the another one option IgA is also there IgA is also known as secretory immunoglobulin that is IgA secretory immunoglobulin this immunoglobulin is mainly present in saliva, intestinal juice, tears and respiratory secretions, all colostrum, all IgA. Okay, that is IgA. In, the, in, in order to uh, this all options, another one immunoglobulin is there that is IgD. IgD is mainly present in the surface of B lymphocyte. Okay, its main function is to recognize antigen that is IgD. Next question, the seventh question, prednisolone is usually not used along with. This is the question and option, option A, omeprazole, option B, ranitidin, option C, aspirin, option D, dionyl. The question is, prednisolone is usually not used along with which medicine? That is the question. So, usually prednisolone here, prednisolone is a steroid. So, one steroid is not given along with aspirin. Why? Which may induce gastric ulcers. Usually, the continuous use of this steroid which may induce gastric ulcer. And also, this use of aspirin also lead to ulceration of the stomach. Therefore, both prednisolone and aspirin is not given together. Okay. So, option C, aspirin is correct. And the next question we can see, eighth question. Which cranial nerve has highest number of branches? Options are option A, trochlear nerve, option B, vagus nerve, option C, trigeminal nerve, option D, facial nerve. So, here question is, which cranial nerve have highest number of branches? Among this, option B, vagus nerve have highest number of branches. So, the important peculiarity of this vagus nerve is, vagus nerve is the longest cranial nerve. Longest cranial nerve is vagus nerve and also most extensive distribution that is more number of branches also have vagus nerve. Okay, so option B is correct and the remaining option trigeminal nerve, option C, trigeminal, trigeminal nerve is the largest cranial nerve and trochlear nerve is the smallest cranial nerve and the longest cranial nerve is vagus and also la highest number of branches that is most extensive distribution of cranial nerves is also vagus option b is correct over here the next question ninth question unicef was established in options are option a 1946 option b 1945 option c 1948 option d 1950 here our question is UNICEF was established in which year? So, UNICEF means United Nations International Children's Emergency Fund. It was established in 1946. So, option A is correct. That is, UNICEF was established in 1946. And the remaining option, option B, uh, 1945. Food and Agriculture Organization was established in 1945. And option C, 1948. WHO, that is World Health Organization, was established in 1948. And 1950, Hind Kushta Nivaran Sangh was established in 1950. This is the next question. That is, Hind Kushta Nivaran Sangh was established in 1950. So, UNICEF was established in 1946. Option A is correct in our question. The next question, 10th question, Hindu Kushta Nivaran Sangh was formed in. And the options are 1946, 1945, 1948 and 1950. So, Hindu Kushta Nivaran Sangh was formed in 1950. 
Our option D is correct over here. The main functions of this Hindu Kusht Nivaran Sangh is to provide financial assistance to various leprosy home and clinics and also, and also health education and training of medical workers. These are the functions of this Hindu Kusht Nivaran Sangh. It was established in 1950. So option D is correct.